to another video. In this video, we're going to review the customer activity and risk. So let's click on the customer and then click on review of customer activity and risk at the bottom. And this form should appear. This section is all completed by the compliance officer. So notice how on the left hand side here, we still have our KYC of the customer. Again, KYC stands for know your customer and you can fill out any fields that you would like. The purpose of this section, notice how we're on the risk tab. This is to be able to track all the transactions that this customer had been doing. So EFT here stands for electronic fund transfer and this is cash, anything that the customer used cash for. So here we obviously see all zeros because this is just a sample customer, but you'll most likely see values here. And then you can also see their first transaction date and their last transaction date if you'd like to keep track of that. And there's also a lot of tabs that we can click on such as the ID, their invoices, and then CTR stands for cash transactions or even check transactions, so we can keep track of that. And then EFT, as we said, stands for electronic fund transfers and also e-wires and wire transfers. So links and third parties are links to this customer, such as beneficiaries, senders, receivers, and so on. They should all be here. And then we have our KYC and AML reviews. The KYC review typically is the customer review of the profile, and this is the activities and risk review, which is what we're about to do. And then for screening, it will typically show a list of all the things that have been cleared on the sanction list or what haven't. And then if we had done any reporting to the government, it will be under the AML reports. So for example, if a customer did a transaction over $10,000, then you'll need to report it to the government. And once reported, it will be tracked here under the AML reports. Also, suspicious transactions will also be under the AML reports. So we can either say that this customer is high risk or not high risk, or you can either moderate it here with this bar. If you just click on how moderate you'd like, so you can even say this customer is moderate risk. So you're also going to want to indicate what the basis of risk determination was. So once we click on it, you can see a variety of options or you can even create your own. If you find yourself typing the same thing over and over again, please refer to our list risk factors video if you'd like to see how to add more options to this list and to use it for further reference. So let's say this customer has a large number of large transactions. Click on pick and it should appear. And you may also simply just type in any explanation you'd like. So if you have done at least two or more transactions with this customer, then that customer has established a business relationship. Therefore, you can click on this option and put in the date. If you'd like to update the date, just click on T and it shall update the date on which you have established this business relationship. And then as of this date, you're going to need to monitor this customer. And then we have the purpose of business relationship. So if we click on that, it can be any of these options below, or you can also add more to it if you'd like. For this purpose, we'll say it's the general foreign exchange cash trading, and we'll say pick. So then we have the purpose of transaction. You're going to want to put what the general purpose of transaction is with this customer. And then we have another purpose of transaction, EFT. Same idea, except this is for electronic fund transfer. Again, you have a variety of options. And then we have the source of funds and wealth. This is typically where the money comes from, from the customer. So we can say personal income, or it could be a bank loan, or any other option. So this means that most of this person's transactions come from personal income. Now for the estimated monthly income, this may be available, it may not. You can say 3,000 for now. For the homeowner option, Say if you're going to a bank and you are asking for a loan for this customer, it will be useful to know if this customer is a homeowner or not. And then for the estimated asset worth, note how this is a textual field and this is essentially the credit of the customer. And then for an example, we're just saying 1.2 million. Sources and references, this is to indicate where you got this information or how you came about this information. So you can either say you searched on Google, you asked the customer, and so on. 
Now for the special AML rules, if you want to put this customer on hold, you're going to have to explain why this customer is on hold, as well as suspicious. If this customer is suspicious, say if they provided a fake ID or their ID appears to be fake, then you're, you're going to want to check this. Then you're going to want to indicate so. Now for the omit KYC checks, this isn't typically something you'd want to use. Basically, it tells the system to ignore all the checks for this customer. The only reason you may want to check it is say if the person works internally for the company and they don't necessarily need all these checks every single time. For the external account, this is a similar idea. This typically means when we have an external account doing the KYC checks for us, but generally we don't want to use these two features. So why you'd want to whitelist a customer is if this customer had a very similar name or the same name to another customer who was on the sanction list, but this customer was not, then we'd want to whitelist this customer so this customer would not get flagged in the future. If a customer does the same transaction multiple times in a day, then you'll most likely get a transaction warning. But if you already know this customer and the purpose of those transactions, then you can say stop repeat transaction warning. Now, sometimes customers can be rated based on a group, and that's essentially what risk class here is defining. So say, for example, that the risk of this customer is equivalent to accountants or bankers or even traders. So if we said trader, for example, we know that all of our traders are marked as high risk. So when we indicate that this customer is at the same risk class as a trader, then we don't always have to remind ourselves as to why we put this customer as a high risk. So essentially you can risk rate this customer based on this class. So when we confirm this review, you're gonna to wanna to put some review notes of this customer. Now here you can put any notes regarding what you had done for this review. You can say, I checked everything, reviewed all the transactions, you Googled them, whatever you'd like. And then we can say, I reviewed the customer profile and KYC info, I checked the client activity, and I signed an appropriate customer risk. And you can just say this was signed and approved by the administrator, and then you save the review. And now we've done a full review of customer activity and risk. If you have any further questions regarding this, please contact Clearview Systems, and see you in the next video.